your existential Mr. Rogers, Robert Meyer Burnett. This is issue 13 of the Weekly Hero, but you know, you're really not here for me, let's face it. You're here for the Enchantress of Effervescence, the girl of a thousand voices, mm-hmm. Chris Carr, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's me. Do you think existential Rogers just means that you wear cool sweaters, but you think about death a lot? I could be. Maybe. I, could, I don't think about death a lot, actually, even though I always say I have one foot in the grave. Yeah. Do you just do it on here to get a rise out of us? Well, no. I mean, I, I think it's always important to remember that we're mortal creatures. But I yeah. I just, I'm not really, I'm, I don't fear death. I'm not worried about it. The only thing that <laughs> talks I. about dying mm-hmm. is I, uh, I might not get to see the next James Bond movie. Whoa, that is bleak. I mean, really, when it comes right down to it, no, I don't want to miss anything. Yeah. I don't want to miss the rest of history. And I that's that's really what death says to me. Oh. Or as Depeche Mode said, death is everywhere. There are flies on the windscreen. Momentum Mori. That's off their uh, Black Celebration record. Ooh. That's a song. Anyway, <laughs> where we're at, Hi. it is the Weekly Hero it Issue is. 13. And Chris, you know, we should just jump right into it. Yeah. Cal Kest, Cal, Cal Kestis is coming back. Yes, he is. I mean, he was once, well, part of the Fallen Order. Yes. And now he's a Jedi survivor. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you believe game. that? I'm so excited about this. A lot of people were talking smack about this trailer, too, because I thought it was great when we saw this footage at Video Game Awards. And then I know people in the chat in the main show were like, it's just okay. John, I think, also was like, eh, it's all right looking. I well, think this what looks What do you fun. expect? Is it supposed to walk on water? Yeah. Like, I thought it was, I, I mean, I, I thought it looked great. I do, too. I think, and I think just the, the whole look of this game is incredible. We keep getting better and better mocap animation done. I oh, mean, yeah. it is so stellar. Everything in this looks <clears throat> cool, epic. I love Cal's vibe in this one, too. I like yep. the aesthetic a lot. I do, too. And, you know, speaking of cool things. Speaking of cool things, cool things that are going to cost you a pretty penny. Mm-hmm. What cool things can you get for this game? You can get his lightsaber. I've is that a euphemism? Wanted some- uh, no. Well, Maybe. Depends on how you feel. I mean, I, look at this. this I have is never dope. wanted something more. I love this so much. Now, it's beautiful. there's been a lot of talk about how uh, video games, you buy video games, they can get steel books, nice special editions, but there's no actual physical media because you download everything. Yeah. Now. So is there an actual game or is that just an empty steel book? Oh, you get an official steel book case. So you get everything. So this is from our friends over at CBR. The collector's editions are being sold for $300. What? But this includes a physical copy of the game, an official steel book case, and a magnetic box holding a full-size 17-inch replica of Kestis's weapon minus the blade, which is sold separately. So that part is a little stinky. I'd like to get the whole thing in there. Um, where do you this buy this? Really cool. Where do you buy the blade separately? I'm not sure, but I mean that is that is a lot of money to just have the handle. Yeah, that's like going to Disneyland and making your own lightsaber, but you get that just the not, blade. Yeah, you just walk out with the hilt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're not allowed to like actually just get the, the light. hilt. Just the hilt. Yeah. Yeah. Is that when we you, all know you need the tip too? You. T- <laughs> You do. You need them all. You need the tip to wield it properly. Exactly. What What is a lightsaber without the light? Uh, you know a what? It's just a saber. Just a saber. Just a saber. That's all it is. Yeah. <laughs> you can't wield anything like that. No, you it's no can't. no good for anybody. I still do want this very much, though. It's pretty dope. Yeah. Uh, really, really kind of exciting. And I like this character, you know. I like the fact that there's like kind of this playable droid or whatever you want to call him. Playable oh sort of. Gosh. You send him off. In a... I mean, that was precious. cool. precious. You know, it's funny. I, I, it's Star Wars video games used to be very hit and miss. Mm-hmm. Like I really liked um, Shadows of the Empire, but there was the there was the Boba Fett bounty hunter game for like the PlayStation Two. Yeah, that game blew. No, that wasn't good. It was not good. It was not a fun game. And I remember getting Force. It was it. It was Force Unleashed. I loved yes, Force, Force Unleashed. Unleashed. Great. That was a great game. Yeah. The sequel is okay, but I like the first one. But these, but. Uh, um, uh, Fallen Order was great. Oh, yeah. So I'm looking forward to this game. I think this is going to be so fun. If we have more BD1 gameplay, I'm really here for that because I do love that droid. And, you know, uh, Cameron, gosh, what's his last name? Monaghan mm. from Shameless? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think he does such a wonderful job here. I, I do wonder, do you think we're going to see him do actual live action within the Star Wars universe that we're getting on Disney <laughs> Plus, too, at some point? Maybe. I, I mean, I I think we could. Mm-hmm. I do I wouldn't be surprised because the period is correct. Right? That's kind of where I'm at with it. And I, I just mean, think he does such a good job. And it, I mean, it literally is his likeness too, which we don't always have with motion capture. But he's so, he is this character. Yeah, it's a so good, good, good character. I think that we get him at some point. 
I'm looking forward to this. Are I don't you, know if I'm going to drop the 300k, that's uh, 300k, ask. 300 dollars. <laughs> yeah, not 300 thousand. I was going to say 300 thousand. Absolutely not. I, I can't even light, visualize what that money looks like. But if it was a real <laughs> lightsaber, I'd spend. If I, I would spend 300 thousand dollars for a real lightsaber. Oh yeah, that worked just like. Not one of these, I mean, a real lightsaber. No, like lightsaber. something that was actually just a laser in your hand? Yeah, I don't want that. I want a kyber crystal working lightsaber. That'd be dope. That would I'd be injure myself so quickly. Would you? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I have dyspraxia. I'm so clumsy. Wow. Well, then maybe you shouldn't get one. I don't think I should. I'll you know just what? stick to being a smuggler. <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Uh, you know what else you should get? And I, 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 this, I don't know why this surprised me, mm -hmm. but it did surprise me. I mean, one of, one of, I think, the better anime shows that I've enjoyed, maybe because I'm an X-Men fan, I don't know, is My Hero Academia. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I never thought that I would see a live action. I mean, I thought after Spike Spiegel kind of tanked, we wouldn't see a lot of live action yeah. anime being developed. Uh, I was wrong. No. <laughs> I was very Netflix wrong. Netflix is doubling down. I mean, doubling down like One Piece? Like one, this live action One Piece, but Come up now and bring along all your hopes and dreams. Uh, unbelievable! I, I like a thousand episodes. I, it's never gonna work. Like, how do they go? Well, we're gonna do ten episode seasons. I'm like, really? How many people are gonna still be all left on Earth? It'll be post nuclear holocaust by the time you finish <laughs> that show. I have hopes but, for that one. Well, now, yeah, we're getting, we're going back to school. We are in live action. There's going to be a My Hero Academia live action movie from Legendary. How do you feel about this? Well, I mean, obviously, I think this lends itself quite well, actually, for sure, to live action, and I think this this is a, a good idea. But again, it's just a movie, like uh, not a series. I would have thought this would this actually really lends itself well. I mean, I think a movie will be good, but sure. I'm surprised. Maybe it's a backdoor pilot. And it'll move into a series? I don't know. What do you think? That's my hope because I do think this works much better for an actual serialized story because that's one of the things that's so strong about this anime too, right? Is that it does have an X-Men feel to it, but how do you do it while keeping true to the to the manga, to the anime, and not make it feel like it is some kind of reductive X-Men sort of situation? Right. Or make it feel like it is kind of um, some boys Gen V sort of situation as well. Because we have a lot of this kind of material out there. How do we do X-Men, Hogwarts, whatever, and still make it feel very, very My Hero Academia? Because, you know, you've got these really cool characters with bizarro powers. Mm -hmm. And I love the hierarchy of how they work. I love the, the you know, the spirit of this show, too. The altruism that characters like Deku have yes. of just, which is that very anime sensibility of, if I just try my hardest... Maybe that's all that matters, which I do love. I think that's one of the things I love most about Japanese storytelling is that as long as I'm here for my friends and I try my best, maybe that's enough. And I do think that's a beautiful aspect of that kind of narrative. Well, that's because they haven't gotten old enough where their hopes and dreams are shattered. To be shattered. They realize trying your best is not enough. It's not. It, Life it, will destroy you. Oh, you will fail and you'll fail hard, but that's okay. Failure's part of it, which again, this show does well of just, hey, Sometimes it isn't enough, but it's that get back up again thing, right? And the show is just really beautiful. It's beautifully animated. The characters are so fun. The powers are nutso butso. I do wish it was a series, though, so you could really delve into all the minutia here because I feel like a, a movie is going to just tighten everything up. And this is a show that's really well-paced, I think. Yeah, I, you, well, that was the funny thing that surprised me is that it, it was going to be a movie mm -hmm. because there is so much story to tell. And there is... I mean, it, when you're in a school, there's a year. There's a you know the academic yeah. year, um, <clears throat> but I I think that look with legendary behind it, they'll certainly have enough money to pull something like this off. Oh yes. And I, I look, I would watch this just to see who they're going to cast and what they look like in live action. That is one of the things I'm wondering about too. Right? Like I, I that was the first thing I saw. I'm like, okay. And there's a lot of possibilities for something like Hot Toys to take on the license to put yes. out. Hot Toys figures of these characters and all that. But I know I'm self-serving that way. But still. That's fine. It, it's, I'm excited for this, actually. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm like, okay, I will watch this show. Even though you haven't mm -hmm. loved the other live actions, you haven't been too turned off. No, because here's the thing. All these people are, well, so-and-so, I don't trust them anymore. E to me, everything is different. It, yeah. Just because I didn't like some anime adaptation i didn't like death note as much as i wanted to or i didn't like ghost in the shell as much as i wanted to Oof. 
you know, I didn't like, uh, uh, well, there's a lot of things I didn't like yeah. as much as, but that I didn't like the space battleship Yamato live action as much mm. as I wanted to, but they changed the gamelons too much. I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> but that doesn't mean that I don't go into every new anime adaptation wanting to love it. Cause I do. That's true. Cause why wouldn't you, why yeah. wouldn't you go into everything wanting to love it? This idea like, well, I've been burned too many times. I'm not going to watch Picard season three. Picard. You're wrong. Because Picard. Picard season three is Ooh. really good. Do you have to say it that way too? Picard. Said Picard, it like, uh, yes. It's Catherine Hepburn yeah. coming in there. Just, um, listen, Picard, Robert, I've watched darling. too much new modern Star Trek, and I'm not here for it anymore, see? I have not any hope for it this time. Uh, well, let me just tell you, uh, all right? It's Picard. good this time. You're going to like it this time. It's it's going to play well. All ten episodes. Surprising. <laughs> well, now we went into the gangster. I, I was doing, like, you know, Catherine Hepburn, and we went into, like, eh, see? Yeah. Well, see? Uh, we're we're going to watch oil. it. You're going to like it. <laughs> Whether you want to or not. I, I'm an apologist for the Bebop live action. I think most of it was quite good. There I didn't were, think it was terrible either. Yeah, there were moments where I went, oh, why did we do that? Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I mean, they really committed to a style and a sensibility that I think worked. And again, you can always go back to the source material. It's not like watching this live action right. like, stole my soul and crushed my dreams. I thought it was fun. I thought it was mostly fun and well done. And I liked seeing a lot of that stuff in live action. Yeah. Like Spike ship. Mm -hmm. It was cool. Very cool. I have a die cast replica of that ship. Ooh, of course you do. I'm not surprised. I like it. Yeah. Uh, but no, I hope this is going to be good. Uh, who knows? Who knows? Maybe it'll be good. Maybe it won't. Yeah. Hope you springs know, eternal, though. You know what probably isn't going to be good? What? The Golden Globes. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Because I, I look, I'm a kid... Like I not un, I, I do not subscribe to John Campia's idea that the Golden Globes are worthless. I always like watching the Golden Globes. The celebrities would get drunk. It was fun. Yeah. Um, I know they've had a bit of they ran afoul of a lot of corruption, a lot of crazy anyway. I have to say, to be honest, mm -hmm. I read the Golden Globe nominations this morning and I thought they were pretty legit. I thought yeah. all the all they spread the awards out around. Uh it there were, wasn't any weird surprises, but I'll tell you what I really like seeing. My girl, Angela Bassett. Oh, yeah. Ramonda's picking up a Golden Globe Award potential for winning Best Supporting Actress yes. in Wakanda Forever. Now, look at this. She is my queen. I, I am a huge Angela Bassett fan, and I'm not one of these bandwagon guys that talks about what's love got to do with it where she's playing Tina Turner. Let me tell you. I mean, she is magnificent in that, but. She is magnificent in that, but let me tell you a movie that people have slept on that was written by James Cameron and Jay Cox. She plays Ray Fiennes' bodyguard and kicks major boutet in the 1995 science fiction, much, much underappreciated science fiction film, Strange Days. Ooh. I love her on that so much. I mean, she's the best. I mean, I love Angela Bassett. Yeah. Always loved She's her. She's incredible. She's incredible. And this performance, there, yes. Yeah. That is what I'm talking about. That is my queen right there. And it's so funny because she loves Ray Fiennes and Ray Fiennes doesn't realize, like, clearly they should be together, mm -hmm. but whatever. See, look, she rescues his ass. Oh, he cute in this. Oh, yeah. Ray Fiennes is the man. He plays Lenny Nero. Mm. You, you know what? I need to watch this. Come to my house and I'll show it to you and love We have so many movies we have yeah, to watch we'll just, now. This is definitely a movie you need to see. Okay. So well, nice, well done on the trigger there, Jonathan. Yeah. Um, but she is now a uh, Golden Globe nominee for Wakanda Forever, which I think this is a good bellwether for the Oscars. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked earlier today on the John Campy show about her getting an Oscar nomination, how Disney is leading their Oscar campaign for Wakanda Forever with her, which, by the way, not a mistake. Yeah. Lead with her. Absolutely. She's amazing. And so what do you think? Would, uh, Golden Globes, were they right to do this? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, this year, too, the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, really, they claim to try to make some big changes. You know, we've added in, I believe, 21 U.S.-based journalists as opposed to just more people within the film industry itself. Um, we now have about 62 countries, I believe, represented as well, mm -hmm. too. So I'm hoping we see these changes actually happen where it doesn't have that sensibility right of you can buy a golden globe because that's right. always been the kind of hollywood in joke is that this is just a big party where you buy your award and sure it's kind of the litmus test for who's going to get nominated for oscars but people have kind of treated it pretty loosey-goosey in the past i think this is a wonderful milestone one because i mean angela bassett i can't believe her only other nomination has been for what's love got to do with it 
that's bananas to me because she is always just an incredible performer who delivers no matter what she's in. But also, you know, to, to our sensibilities, this is a huge milestone for comic books. Yes. Right? We had uh, we had Black Panther nominated previously for Best Picture. And, but, uh, and a win for Best Costume for best Design costume, for yes. Ruthie Carter. And we have that interview too, right? Where you can it's watch on, that. It's on. You can see that interview with yeah. her on this channel, Designing Hollywood, right now. Boom. I mean, not right now. Stay here. We're live. We'd appreciate that. Yeah, we are. That. I mean, yes. <laughs> Later, when you're free. Can but you to, have, to have an acting nomination for this, too, it feels a lot like when, when Ian McKellen got his nomination finally for playing Gandalf, right? Where a lot of times, genre seems to determine the merit of a film in terms of Hollywood prestige awards. Very much so. And, and that's not the case. You know, a medium or a genre does not determine that. So fantasy films, comic book movies, you know, sci-fi, all of these kinds of movies really can deliver wonderful tour de force performances as we see with Angela Bassett here. So I think that's the really cool thing here of something that a lot of prestige filmmakers have poo-pooed on in the last few years. Yes. No, you can have a really stunning, emotional, beautiful, and strong, powerful performance within these genres. And I think that's the cool takeaway here. Well, the great thing about, I think, Angela Bassett is, you know, Strange Days was a speculative science fiction film of mm -hmm. the near future. She, you never feel that she's ever phoning a performance in. She is a ferocious actress. She delivers performances that come right down. She digs deep in no matter what she's in. I, I'm a huge fan of her as a performer. As a matter of fact, even when she doesn't have a big role, she's in contact. Yes. Another, and, and I love the movie kind of ends with a conversation between her and James Woods talking about the the. 18 hours of, of video footage that this thing recorded, even though it was static. She's awesome. I mean, she just classes up any joint she's in. I mean, Absolutely. She, I lo not that Contact is a prestigious movie. By the way, where's the 4K? Uh, I love <laughs> that film, and I love her in it. I love her in anything. I mean, look at her here. Come on. She's the best. She's wonderful. Well-deserved. Well-deserved. And you know what? It made me more interested in watching the Golden Globes again this year. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what that brings us to? It brings us to you and I. We have we got issues. We do. But before we get into that, we're going to hear a word from our sponsor. Yes. I don't know who that sponsor is. The lovely folks over at Masterclass. That's why you're here. We want to thank a sponsor of this video, Masterclass. Masterclass offers classes on a wide variety of topics, all taught by world-class instructors at the very top of their fields. Each class is broken out into individual video lessons, usually around 10 minutes long. And Masterclass is completely accessible on your phone, the web, smart TV, and available via audio mode to listen to classes on the go. They have over 2,500 video lessons from over 180 of today's most brilliant minds. They're all available anytime, anywhere on iOS, Android, desktop, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku. Now, obviously around here on the John Campus Show, we love our movies. So why not learn filmmaking from Jodie Foster or maybe directing from Ron Howard himself or the great Neil Gaiman doing his masterclass on the art of storytelling. And you guys have heard me talk about my favorite masterclass, Business Strategy and Leadership by Big Papa Iger himself, Bob Iger, the new and returning CEO of Disney. Guys, I highly recommend that you check it out. This holiday, give the perfect gift of an annual masterclass membership and get one free. Go to masterclass.com slash campia today. That's masterclass.com slash campia. Terms apply. Well, and we come back. Thank you to our friends from Masterclass for once again supporting this episode of The Weekly Hero. Mm -hmm. Chris, there's been a lot of talk. We talked this morning about James Gunn saying that Superman is a cornerstone of the upcoming DCEU or DC Universe. Yes. Whatever the hell they're going to call it. <laughs> um, I mean, Superman, obviously one of the great superheroes, all goes all the way back to 1938. I mean, yes, but he, he, there was the tradition of, of heroes like Gilgamesh and the pantheon of Roman and Greek gods. It's not like he was just a new iteration, but exactly. But came right out of the Depression, pre World War II, uh, probably the most well known superhero of oh, the yeah. modern age by an far, an icon. Uh, I don't know how they're going to handle what what James Gunn is looking to do, but I have always thought that this issue that you and I have between us mm -hmm. uh, was one of my favorite Superman stories of the last twenty five years. It's beautiful. It is, it is lyrical, and I've often thought, now, 
it wouldn't be very expensive, less expensive than a lot of other Superman movies. I don't know if people would buy it as a movie, but I've always thought I would love to see this Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale graphic novel, A Superman for All Seasons, which is absolutely beautiful. It's stunning. Turned into a movie. And and it's it's done in four parts, obviously, winter, spring, summer, fall. Uh, and just adapt it as is, as a lyrical fairy tale storybook like examination of what what makes the man of steel the man of steel yeah and it is am i wrong i mean what do you think of this comic no i think this is beautiful i think it's such a great story because it really humanizes superman and that's one of the things we talked about on the show too about that's one of the issues that happens here is how do you make this character relatable and a lot of that is going through how ostracized he is and how much he really wants to connect with humanity right um what's beautiful about superman for all seasons is each season truly is a love story that's yes. really what it comes down to not only in like the traditional sense but in that kind of um tolkien romantic literature sense yes um, where it's he has he has a love story with with humanity of wanting to connect and be selfless for them and put his own needs aside and sacrifice so much of himself for them. Um, you have this beautiful story of how a father needs to allow their son to leave and grow, and it's particularly beautiful and heartbreaking because so much of this is Jeff Loeb talking to his own son Sam who lost his battle with cancer and so it's a really beautiful story each season is told from a different narrator's perspective yes so you have Pa Kent and then you've got Lois then you've got Lex Luthor talking about this city that is no longer enamored with him and how he's lost it to this kinder gentler man in a way um you have Lana coming in and really honestly making a case for the the love story of Lana and Clark too in a way that I never connected with before because you know he's going to end up with Lois. Right. But it's really, really beautiful. Um, and they've actually borrowed things from this before in really effective ways. You know, in Superman and Lois, we have that lovely line of the, thanks, my mom made it for me about right. a suit. Yep. And I think that's kind of what you do here is you take this basic story that really talks about what a good person Clark is, what a good, kind man he is. And then you can sexy it up in some moments with some big battles and add some really cool things in there. But I think it's just a a wonderful story that that shows you one the scope of Superman in its art, just those big lovely landscape images with him still like dominating the frame, but you see like all of America and him in it. Um, but also then shows you just like what kind of hero he wants to be. I think this is the one to look to. <clears throat> no, it's it's amazing. I mean, I, the funny thing is 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 obviously this would not be the kind of comic fanboys would love to see translated into a movie. No. Because, however, that said, it could be turned into the kind of movie you would not expect. And if Henry Cavill was given one last shot before they rebooted the entire DC universe, this would be a totally offbeat way you take all four of yeah. these stories and turn them in. And, like, it, it, it's not... If I say this name, people are going to be like, "Ah, oh, Rob, he directed Alien Resurrection. Don't do that." <laughs> but I, 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 if you got somebody like Jean Pierre Jeunet who directed Amelie, or who directed a very long engagement, and if you could find somebody that would bring that lyricism to, in a way, it's kind of like I would describe it. It's not like this, but the kind of the way the Princess Bride. No, works. I get that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's 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 along those lines. If you nobody would give you the money. Warner Brothers would look at you like you're out of your effing mind. Mm -hmm. But well, do we not swear on this show anymore? I don't know. Out of okay. my fucking mind. <laughs> they they but they would say that to me. I would do it though. Mm -hmm. And I think you could turn this into a movie that could be one for the ages if it was done correctly. Yeah. Because look, the problem with Superman. And I've, I watched this firsthand covering the entire production of Superman Returns, which you can see on the Blu-ray, my three-hour documentary, Requiem for Krypton, Making Superman Returns. is worth watching. Um, so the, the, the problem is the story that you come up with for Superman, he's so overpowered that you kind of have – you always have to figure out excuses or ways around – you have to d devise some work around where he's either depowered or he's tricked – or there's he can't, or there's magic some kind of magic you yeah. know there's something so it's it's really hard to do a superman story on screen it's very 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 difficult this you could do and what they do with superman and lois making him a father the problem with that is 
when you're watching a feature film that costs $200 million to make, no one's going to want to watch Superman's daddy issues. Yeah. Raising teenage sons. You have to turn it into a blockbuster. This you make for a price. You make a Superman movie for 80 million bucks. Hmm. That could be good. It could be fun. Well, I mean, if you could, nobody's going to do that. Not even James Gunn. But I think you do look to this for those characterization yeah. aspects. Because when he is just kind of a brooding outsider, that doesn't really connect either. <clears throat> not with the iconography iconography of Superman. And not with the, the Superman I think most of us want to see. Is we do want to see somebody who, in a lot of ways, represents us as fans. I, I know it's much more in vogue to be a, a comic book geek these days. But, you know, uh, for the longest time, and I think this is why we do have gatekeeping in our fandom, is, is we were ostracized for loving these things. Right. We were outsiders who really, really wanted to connect with other people, and we wished people would connect with us about it. And that's fandom in its truest sense, is going, I love this so much. I want you to love it with me. Wouldn't that be great if we could both really enjoy this thing and I could share it with you? And I think that's the beauty of Superman as kind of our window character of, I love humanity so much and I wish I was like you and yes. that's why I have to protect you. And I think that's where these kinds of stories really, really have beautiful payoff for a, a cinematic character. 100%. I, I agree with you 100% on this. I don't know if we'll ever get that, Yeah. but it would be great to see a Superman movie. Unfortunately, that's not traditionally what people want. No. Nah. You know, who's going to sue Superman going to fight? Yeah. Well, that's limiting. What kind of a story eventually you're going to tell that story? Well, and all of that really has to be second nature to everything. It has to be second hand. It's all tertiary because what works best and what we've seen work best in superhero films is when they are character driven. And yes. then everything else just is icing, basically. I agree. Yeah. I agree. hundred percent. Superman for All Seasons by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. Beautiful, lyrical Superman book. From 1998. It is so wonderful. Wow, is it almost 25 years yeah. old? Yeah. Wait till next year. They'll inevitably release the hardcover. 25 oh, year, yeah. you know. It's going to be stunning. Yeah, wait till you get that. Mm -hmm. Maybe it'll be an absolute edition. Who knows? Oh, yeah. Probably well, that, in honor of Tim. There you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that brings us to my favorite part of the segment because it's about me yeah. and my collection of action figures. And today, I slid one under the wire. I'm bringing you a Star Trek figure. Ha ha! Hello, everybody. I am here with the Seeker of Sisters the Relisher of Redheads, and the Titan of Twerking. Rob, what hot toy do you have for us today? Well, this is not a, a hot toy. This is from a company called Exo6. They came on the scene a couple of years back. They're making only high-end Star Trek six-scale figures. So you can imagine how excited I am. These figures are incredible. Star Trek has never been given the due it deserves in high-end six-scale figures. This is Captain Benjamin Sisko after he's become a captain. In the latter seasons of Deep Space Nine during the Dominion War, he's of course in his first contact uniform. These, these uniforms were introduced to the Star Trek universe in the film First Contact from 1986. So the latter half of the seasons, like six, seven, and eight, they were wearing these costumes. And as you can see, I love this figure, the tailoring that XO6 brings to the costumes. The uniforms are incredible. This figure is full of accessories. He comes with, of course, his ubiquitous baseball that Captain Sisko puts on his desk. I love the fact that the figure even came with the baseball. He also comes with a drink glass, if anyone has ever seen the Star Trek episode, Deep Space Nine episode, The Pale Moonlight. Um, many different hands, weapons. He comes with a pad that's not pictured here. Just an incredible, incredible figure. This figure just came out in the last couple weeks, and it's the first of their Deep Space Nine figures. Quark is their second figure that's also incredible. It's gone up for pre-order. I mean, ever since they allowed Avery Brooks to shave his head and grow the goatee, Captain Sisko is my second favorite Star Trek captain behind uh, Captain James Tiberius Kirk. I love this character. I love this figure. It is badass. And I unfortunately will have to buy every Star Trek figure they put out, with the exception of Star Trek Discovery. Even the J.J. Abram ones? Oh, they're not going to do those. I don't have to worry. <laughs> well, there you go. I mean, you know, <laughs> XO6 killing it. They're going to drop tomorrow at 9 a.m. pre-orders for Spock in his 
black Star Trek the motion picture robes, which I never thought they'd make, goes on pre-sale. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna sell out within minutes, like Admiral Kirk did. So if you're a Star Trek fan, watch out for that. So there you go. I mean, awesome. that brings us. I know, right? I mean, Avery Brooks, come on, very cool. And we're gonna get Quark. Damn, do I love my Star Trek figures. Mm. Well, that's uh, that's pretty much it for you know the live portion of this show. Now we're gonna go to the super chat. We're gonna go to the super chats. We're gonna find out what you yeah wants, uh, Chris. Chris, what do you think? <laughs> what do you think people are going to say today? Starting with Jeffrey. From Jeffrey Lindblad. Last week, Rob said it'll be getting hard to pick a favorite or best issue. So I thought I might help you out this week. The best one, in my opinion, is What If Volume 1, Number 13, HMAS hash, uh, Number 13, and NTT Number 13. Um, New Teen Titans? Maybe. Uh, well, you know what? You, we don't need help this week. Yeah, because I we we knew this was going to happen. We did. Yeah. We anticipated. I mean, I, I'm cheating a little with a volume, but I like volume 13 of Invincible, Growing Pains, because we talk about Conquest, one of the the big bads of the Invincible series. Oh, it's a good one. It's real, real good. Well, then, see? I mean, that those aren't, I mean, the thing is, we can't just have a, a number and issues. We got to know why. If you're going to tell true. us what is it about, yeah. and, and and while I appreciate the help, mm-hmm. I appreciate the able assist, I don't get any insight well, into why they picked those issues. Yeah. Well, and I also, I just, I don't think a lot about the the actual volume issue number and all of that when I'm thinking about the comics I love most. It's usually a specific storyline that sticks right. out to me. Also, I'm, I buy omnibuses. I'm really bad about getting single issues. I live in an apartment. It's tiny. Rent's expensive. I don't have a lot of real estate. There are some things like I could tell you that uh, the Avengers, the George Prez, Kurt Busiek uh, Avengers run, mm-hmm. I could tell you I love that issue 22 because that was the issue where Thor says, Ultron, we would have words with thee. Oh, I can remember which that. Good line. Which I thought for sure that 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 Joss Whedon was going to put into Age of Ultron, and he didn't. How, how do you not have Thor say, Ultron, we would have words with thee? Come on, Joss. Ah, come on, man. I don't know what that what means. What a fake geek. <laughs> Totally. What's next? From Al Renshaw. If they did Boba Fett season two, thoughts on them bringing back Mace Windu, but then having Boba kill him by the end? That would redeem him. Well, he's dead already. I mean, I, everyone's talking about bringing back Mace Windu. But, I mean, didn't we see him pretty much die in Revenge of the Sith? Basically. I mean, I look, I, 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 the fact that I, I thought he didn't go out like he went out fighting. He went out fighting a dark lord of the Sith, the man who had stuck his way into the New Republic or the Old Republic or yeah. the Republic. And I don't, I just, I don't, bringing Mace back, I don't think is cool. I just don't think we need to. If there was a really great story that made sense, sure. But it feels just very fan servicey to be like, hey, hey, and Sam Jackson's back. Right. I, yeah. That's my only issue with it. I know. But Hot Toys, where's your, where is Mace Windu? Come on. Yeah. Don't sleep on that figure anymore. From Mod Awesome, after Carl Urban's Butcher, I think he'd be a great Lobo. Don't get me wrong, I'm still a fan if Mo- uh, Momoa gets to play him too. Yeah, I could <laughs> see Carl Urban. I think that's that. a great that's a great idea. He's New- he's from New Zealand, so yeah. he's another Pacific Islander. Exactly. There you go. They both have some bombacity to them. I know. I love Carl Urban. Yeah, I think he's incredible. He's incredible. It's just I think the physicality of Momoa you kind of can't beat at this point. Right, and he's got the hair. Yeah, and the so- voice. Yes. He's got that voice where you know he could just say, all right, I'm the main man and be killer. He's the main man. He is. All right. I've watched that. From Al Renshaw again, 8 million, LOL, hashtag army of Ray. That killed me today. That was, And then what the callback was even better. It was so good. 8 million. So good. Oh, Ray, Ray's probably the funniest person on this channel. Ray is the funniest yeah. person on this channel. I'll just he see really myself is. out. Oh, then it's you, Jonathan. Yay. I get second at funny. <laughs> I'm not, I don't know if I'm even in top five. Oh, man. <laughs> no, you're up, you're up there. Okay. Phew. From Fangblaze 71, possible hot take, Guardians of the Galaxy are better than the Avengers. They're a true family and feel like a family while Avengers are co-workers. But does that make them great protectors? Like, what are we talking about as better here? Yeah, that. I mean, I think that they're a more cohesive group. Yes. But like the Avengers, the Guardians of the Galaxy are misfits that found one another, whereas... The Avengers were recruited. You know, I mean, 
they were Nick Fury recruited the I mean, Avengers. Much, much like all of us, though. It's true. And now we've become a chosen family. Uh, I wow! I never thought of it that way, but truly we are. I mean, kind of some of us. <laughs> it's true. Cho chosen drinking buddies. That's right. <laughs> that is correct. From Cameron Bienvenue. Wish I could get Glass Onion on physical media. Man, don't get me started because, of course, Knives Out had one of the great uh, releases, what, two years ago? My friend Cliff Stevenson, our, our friend here, he did a great feature-length documentary on the making of the first Knives Out. He was on set. He was not asked back because they weren't, they weren't doing that for Glass Onion. That's a bummer. So there's no documentary. There's no feature-length documentary. And, yeah, I want that movie on physical media as well. I'd love to get a nice 4K disc. But it's Netflix, so it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I guess I'll have to go to, well, if you know Stinky Tuna and the Tuna Train, maybe you can get it there. But I'm not saying you should. But you shouldn't. Oops. <laughs> anyway. From Harv's K, what are your thoughts on state of the comic book industry? The reliance on variant covers and first appearances feels like the pre-crash 90s again. Ooh. Wait, there's a modern comic book industry? I thought it was all just manga. No, uh, I, I look, I think that, um, you know, look, rightly or wrongly, superhero characters are steeped in classical storytelling, especially the big, whether it's Marvel and DC. Yeah. Not that you can't change those things, but I do think that the comic book industry is always, it's always been its own worst enemy. And I think one of the problems is that we've been, I mean, the fact that they have to tout that Kal-El is coming back. Wait a minute, where's Superman been? Yeah. That's a rhetorical question. But yes, we all know where Superman has been. Now they have to bring, as if, why would you get rid of him in the first place? But it's it's not in a good, but, but variant covers. The funny thing is, is you're right. But the history, those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Uh, we care less about variant covers these days than ever before. And they're trying to force that back. It doesn't work because, like everything else, collecting, you still have to love the story. You have to love the story. That's what it comes down to. I will say I am a sucker for certain variant covers. Though. Well, I, there, there's it great... It depends on the artist. Yeah, there's, very, there's great variant covers, yeah. but ultimately people are speculating when they just go out and buy the variant covers. You yeah. buy a variant cover because you like the artist. Yeah. If you're going to try and collect all the variants because you're going to make money. Oh, no. Uh, Newsflash, you won't. No. You I won't. just do a, oh, I love this art so much. Ding, this is mine now. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you want. Mm -hmm. That's the way it should be. Agreed. From Mr. Hank Dunn. Sorry about my super chat earlier. It was a reference to John's Ask Me Anything and his almost 30-minute rant. Love you guys. No worries, Hank. But just sometimes certain words should not come out of my mouth because this is on the internet, which is forever. So even though I sometimes say things that I go, gosh, dang it, why did I say that? I try to avoid certain things, too. What did John rant about for 30 minutes? I don't know. I don't watch the Ask Me Any Things. I don't, I, I don't either. Yeah. I was ranting about John Juice of motion smoothing on his TV, but that's just He me. uses motion smoothing? I know. Shh, don't even. Somewhere Tom Cruise is livid. I, I know. I know. What can you do? Manscaped wants their Manscaped back. <laughs> From Mad Awesome, across the Spider-Verse trailer tomorrow, hyped. I'm so hyped and I'm really angry. I'm not going to talk about it. I know what Mr. Hank Dunn's reference was. That was the one we skipped over in yeah. today's chat about. Yeah. I, I, I thought that was pretty damn funny, to be honest. I know. It was funny. I just didn't want it to come out of my human mouth, to borrow yes. a term from I, Amy. Now, 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 now it's all, it's all, it's all I get it. Back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now that I but see, are we excited about Spider Verse trailer? <laughs> uh, you know, I yes, <laughs> I'm hype about. It. I want to. I want to go across the Spider Verse, yeah. preferably not with my mouth full. <laughs> Dear God! All right, from CJ Reworth. One of my favorite comic book movie endings is for Spider Man Two. The score, Peter getting MJ, and her saying "Go get him, Tiger." I loved that theater experience. Oh, it was Agreed. great. I mean, and and also for those of you who knew the comics, it was so gratifying. I yeah. mean, that that it is truly one of the great comic book movies of all time. It really is. It's so well done. Loved it. Totally agree. Also, CJ Rebirth, thank you for being at uh, Yorkiethon Seven. I saw you in the comments. I know a couple other Campia campers were there, but I just want to say thank you for being there. We raised so much money for puppies. That's it was so really, great. Really, really great. It was wonderful. 
Uh, Attack of the Mushi. I'd love to see Marvel adapt Sadarsky's Daredevil. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, why not? Uh, but but again, it's it's. Uh, will it all fit? I don't know. I mean, that's a great run on Daredevil, though. I mean, I I, I hope so too. That'd be cool. Because they keep going back. It, not that I don't love the Born Again run, but I mean, that was the '80s. Not that they shouldn't, but but. The, well, and we kind of got it with Netflix already. Oh, uh, we kind of got it already. We got it with kind of the movie too, the yeah. the Daredevil film. Just I mean, keep doing it over and over. Again. Uh, over and over, they go to the same. Not that that isn't a bad well to go back to, but. There is other things. Exactly. There's in the last forty years. There's been more, but yeah. Mm -hmm. From uh, Cameron Bienvenue, love y'all. Still can't see green beans the same. Oh. Nor should you. <laughs> Nor should you. Always Amy remember. Newman is a champion. Yum 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 oh, yum yum. Freaking love that chick. Oh my gosh. From Cyan one zero one zero one. Chris, hi. The Scrooge SNL skit this weekend made me think of you. Scrooge chucking coins into people's eyes on accident. Well, also, can we get a meanwhile in the Hall of Family from Rob? <laughs> meanwhile in the Hall of Family. <laughs> That's great. You like that? I do. That's my best. Who did that? Was that Ted Knight? Who, who's the? I think so. Was it? Was yeah. It? I think it was. That was really solid. Oh, man. I, I still haven't watched all of SNL because I, I no longer have Peacock. Oh, so I've yeah. been watching it clips over clips YouTube. On you, they, I used to get the clips on YouTube. They don't show up on my feed. Oh really? Yeah, because we're subscribed. I, I, I watch too many, um, too many uh, ridiculous TikTok. Oh, the videos. algorithm's all wonky now. Yeah, it's all wonky. Yeah, my mine's just cooking shows and then ads that I play for my students. <laughs> it's a really, really sad feed. Yeah. Well, what can you do? From Sidhu, Dark Tower with Flanagan's vision and Amazon's money. Uh, look, I can't wait for this. Now, remember, this is what Ron Howard was going to do. They were going to adapt all the Dark Tower books and then have different and movies as well. I hope they pull that off. And he carved that, remember, he carved that out out of the Amazon deal so he could shop that other places. I'd be like, bro, you've got to take that to Amazon. They've got the money. Implement the plan. Make it happen. Absolutely. Take your Flash dance that. Yeah. Take your passion and make it happen. Aw, good reference. That's right. From CDU again, Fallen Order is the best Star Wars, save for Empire and Andor. I, I mean, I kind of agree. Yeah, I, I mean, I love I love Fallen Order. It was so good. Yeah. Really? But I actually thought that um, in Fallen Order, I thought that kind of like junkyard for starships, that was also, they also had something like that in Andor, but... Completely different planet, but I actually thought that was the same planet or a reference to that. But it Could was very similar. Well be. It felt like it was connected, but yeah. Yeah. It's true. From Retribution, Retribution Zero, Firefly was live action Outlaw Star. Just saying. Could be. I, I don't know I mean, Outlaw Star, but I could definitely see that. Yeah. I can see them as, as being at least a, an inspiration. Yeah, for sure. From Dr. J, Chris, Bobster. <laughs> I'm determined to live long enough to see John Campia's out of cinema reaction for the Batman Beyond Neo Year blockbuster. Well, Woo! Dr. J, you and us both. I mean, I think that uh, by the by the way, Neo Year doing bat that there's your movie right it's there. So good, it's ripe for the taking. It's all right there. James Gunn, he's just green light, green light, gr green night or green light, whichever <laughs> comes first. Uh, that would be great stuff. I'd love to see it. Yeah. One day, John will eat his words. Mm-hmm. Late night alum, Rob. The time is ripe for a modernized edit. Wait, I need to do a better Rob. Bro, the time is. I can't do it, Taylor. I need you. All right, all right. <clears throat> the to oh, I, oh, oh, I can pause here. it. I can pause it on mine. Here we go. <laughs> Where'd it go? There it is. Okay. The time is ripe for a modern, <laughs> modernized adaptation of the Tripod series. Any chance? Wait, are we supposed to be reading this in Rob's voice, yeah. or is yes. it just a question for I Rob? It I don't know, but I'm reading it. I'm going to do it in Rob's voice anyways. Yeah. Uh, any chance of that happening, movie, or series-wise, bring on the filthy that, and the redheads. Well, was that well Kate, you know, John. Was that Kate Blanchett? Oh, no. What the Kate hell, Blanchett man? Like hey, a different okay. <laughs> okay, let's... <laughs> that let's, was one let's, of your weaker... Enough of Rob. my... Let's talk about... Let's talk about in all seriousness what our viewer, our <laughs> astute viewer is saying. So for those of you who don't know, there's an author pen named John Christopher who wrote, well... Four books, but three of them, uh, they're the, called the Tripods Trilogy. And when I was a kid, they were my Harry Potter. 
That would be the White Mountains, the City of Golden Lead, and the Pool of Fire. And for the longest time, Disney owned these. The BBC did them as the tripods. They never finished the three books. Basically, the premise is humanity has fallen. It takes place hundreds of years in the future. And basically, humanity is living in the Middle Ages. And aliens have completely taken over the Earth. And they're building, they have giant dome cities, and they're getting ready to terraform the Earth to their own atmosphere. And it's about three guys who escape what they call capping day because the aliens come around the countryside and they give human beings caps they put on their heads so they can't uh, rebel. And these three kids go off to the White Mountains to find join the rebellion to prevent the Earth from being terraformed by these aliens. These books are awesome. They've been trying to make these books for 30 years. They can't get them made. I don't know why. I want to see them. They got to do this. Why it's not a streaming ser- a series already, I don't know. Come on, Disney, make this happen. I love these books. Yeah. Give Rob things he likes. Yes. Yeah. You know what? If somebody just put me in charge of all development in Hollywood, I would green light things that would only become hugely successful. Because I would hand pick everything and it would all work. You know why? Because I know what's good. I know what works. Because you read so many scripts. I uh, yeah. And so by the way, way say that. don't you shut your dirty up. mouth. Don't say that. <laughs> by the way, I have received three scripts today. That's a good day, then. They go into the garbage. Do so, not do that to me. He's pissed it's not more. Yeah. So Monday. send your scripts to Rob, and we'll be good. <clears throat> From Larvitoff, are y'all caught up on the anime manga of My Hero? I'm not caught up. I'm not caught up either. No. There's I'm, too much to catch say, up There's with. way too much stuff, and since we know... Uh, cover anime on this show, really. I'm so far behind on all of it. I I'm feel... pretty sure my youngest is. Yeah? She loved it. It's a really great show. Because I, I, when the movie came out, I wasn't caught up. So but I we don't have go. all of it translated here yet, do we? I thought we were pretty much up. Are we caught up? I'm not sure. I just know I'm woefully behind. All right, I'm behind too, so. Yeah. What can I say? John Doe. Taika had some of the best comic source material at his fingertips, one of the greatest actors, Christian Bale, and decided to make a goofy rom-com. I mean, we're kind of in the same boat as you, John Doe. Some people really love this movie. Jonathan, I know you have fun with that movie. The love th- uh, Thor, Love and Thunder. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a matter of taste, I think. it's For some people, it really worked. For some people, it didn't. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I, I was not a fan of that. I love Taika Waititi. Like, I loved what we do in oh, the shadows. Yeah. I love the series. Um, I just think sometimes, you know, directors want to put their imprintur on something and maybe they're not exactly the right guys to do it. Yeah. I love what he did with Ragnarok. I thought he went too far. I thought that that it was too goofy, whereas there was a there was a great balance to be struck in that film. I don't think the film struck that balance. I agree. I could be wrong though. From Fifi. Late to the stream, but just wanted to ask, who's getting that collector's edition of Jedi Survivor? I just pre-ordered mine. Well, Fifi, God bless you. Yeah. I mean, I I don't think that we're going to drop drop the green, but... I'm probably not dropping 300 just because that's about the same price as headshots, which I got to get in the new year. I got to get new ones. 300 is a hot toy. Yeah. You know? Mm, and for me, I, only because video games, in terms of special editions of video games, Dieter Bastion will probably drop the green. Uh, who I do a show with oh, on nice. physical media, but I would rather have a hot toy, a Star Star Wars hot toy. I'm I'm so boring. I just buy stuff for my company and for myself tapes. <laughs> I'm just there. You go. All right. Well, I need new lights, or I need to upgrade my mics, or get a- additional sound panels. My my Elfster is just. But that woeful. helps you get more money. That's which true. Which means you survive longer. That's very true. As opposed to being homeless. Yeah. That's a smart play. Well, thanks. I try. I'm a pragmatist. Speaking of 300 and hot toys, do they have a 300 hot toy? They Ooh. do. They had a 300 hot toy. They have uh, they have Jared Butler. Nice. Uh, but it's sold out when the movie came out. It's, yeah. That's a 15-year-old hot toy. Yeah. That's a $1,000 toy if you can find him. Ooh. If you can find him in good shape. Dang. But it's a badass figure. This is Sparta. <laughs> <laughs> From Khalil Frederick, you guys been keeping up with the recent dope Daredevil and Punisher runs? I love the new directions for both characters. Mariah Castle getting character is nice. I have not. Me uh, you know what? I'll tell you something. I do not buy new comics anymore at all. I I, I get hardcover omnibuses when they come out if the storyline seems interesting to me. The only thing I've been keeping up with was was Gail Simone's variants, 
and I'm behind on that now. Yeah, I mean, I, I the last thing I was really into was Hickman's X Men run. Ooh, yeah. And I like, I really love, I love that stuff. But there's, there's been some stuff like I look into this stuff and I want it to be good. But am I gonna? Is it a hundred dollars good to get a, a Marvel omnibus? Which I love my Marvel omnibuses, yeah. but no, I hear you. I hear you. I wait. From Alan Jara ninety one, what is the next movie you're going to watch at home? That's very funny that you ask. I don't know because I have somebody coming out to check out our media room tonight. Oh, fun! And uh, I have to pick out. Uh, it's. Uh, a, a nice, wholesome family entertainment film. Hmm. The last thing I was watching, though, was the unbelievably beautiful Paramount 4K of My Fair Lady <gasps> with Rex Harrison and Audrey Hepburn. I was watching that last night with Elizabeth. I love that movie so much. That disc is, oh my God, is that transfer <sighs> amazing. It was Best Picture in 1960, well, 65. Mm -hmm. Best Picture of 64. I think it won eight Oscars. I mean, my God, there's some great musical numbers in there. The first musical number in there about the English language is one of the great songs ever written for, well, it wasn't written for a movie. It was written for a play. I mean, yeah. it was written for the musical. I think you can find it on, it is so clever. I was, Every time I watch it, I'm like, I'm going to memorize this song, and I'm going to try and sing it when I'm drunk. The Rain in Spain? That one? No, no, no. Which the one, one? About the, that Rex Harrison sings about the English language, oh, okay, about yeah. what, what an Englishman thinks about mm -hmm. the English language. I don't know the name of the song. It's the greatest song ever. Well, if I, you're looking for a good family-friendly uh, movie to watch in your theater room, I would recommend Shrek. Would it's you? True. Well, I would. We're shocked. You know, I, I I never would have thought that of you. Paint very, yourself very green. Shocked. Watch all go. four of them. Back to back to back Perfect. to back. There you go. I, I, there you go. I'm into it. I don't know if anyone else will. I don't I'll think ask. he's into it. <laughs> I, the next movie I'll be watching is more more Christmas fair. Probably tonight I'll probably be watching um, Charlie Brown Christmas, Colbert Christmas, and then maybe maybe Claymation Christmas. We're we're in the Good. zone, you guys. It's all Christmas till the end of this show. It's true. Till till we take our break on the twenty third. I'm all Christmassy all, all the time. Christmassy all this. Okay. Yeah. All right. This is my season. This is my Super Bowl. I live for this. Okay. I love it. Fangblaze seventy one. Let's say Puss in Boots and a hunger, uh, a hunger lusted Garfield fight. Who wins? Puss in Boots kills Garfield. One thousand takes his head off. Yeah, in seconds. He's got a sword. Yeah, Garfield just has uh, lasagna. Yeah. Exactly. And try as you might, I mean, I mean, they did it in seven, but you really can't kill a man with pasta. Uh, no, you. Can't. I mean, that's a no. slow burn. Yeah, takes a while. You have to force feed him till he bursts. Exactly. From Zashan, new Call of Duty disc is just a 70 MB key to download. Yeah, they don't even give you the game anymore. You, it's all downloadable. Oh. I know. I don't, I, I I know. don't, I don't love that. I, I don't either, to mm -hmm. be honest. From Gavin Young, I think they'll make a Batman Beyond movie soon because everyone wants an Iron Man style armor. Just look at the last few MCU movies. Everyone gets one. Everyone gets one. Hey, there's one on the desk right here next to Chris, my hot toy of Batman Beyond. There he is. Yeah. Look at him. Gaze and wide wonder. Cool. Sideshow Collectibles had these really awesome. Um, I can say this because I know Logan's not watching the show. Um, they have these really, really cool uh, Sentai figures right now of if these heroes had Iron Man technology, how their oh, costumes yeah. would be. Oh, they're sick. I got a couple. Wow. They're real good. I like that. Yeah. Miss lost my spot. Give me one. Oh, that's okay. Second. We've lost our spot too. No worries. Here we go. I think as long as is that's it not Scotty? Yeah, we just it's Scotty Gavin. Hale. Don't know if you saw, but they announced the first episode of Last of Us will be 90 minutes. I'm ready to be crushed. Well, they have oh, to show yeah. I guess it would have to show the fall of civilization. Mm -hmm. Unless yeah. they jump right into the game, you know. Yeah. Um, I like that. 90 minutes, bring it on. Well, the beginning of that game, when you're just learning the mechanics of it, too, is heartbreaking because you're getting all of Joel's backstory. Right. Which so, is, yeah, I think we're going to get that. For sure. I think it's going to be a play-by-play -play of that. Then we have to tr introduce Ellie. Then we have to introduce the actual crisis. So 90 minutes makes sense. Makes sense to me. Ooh, I excited. almost wonder if the trailer we're getting is actually covering more than season one. Ooh. Because they, they're covering almost the whole game, and it's only nine episodes. And they're fleshing it out. So yeah. I wonder if the trailer actually we're getting scenes from a, from two seasons. I don't know. Maybe, yeah, I don't know. Good question. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey Lindenblatt, 
Uh, WF 13 Conan is the 20th century ASM 13 first year. What? What is happening? Am I having a stroke? Okay. It, okay. In uh, um, what if I did not realize that that's my favorite. What if, what if Conan the Barbarian was in the 20th century oh. with the Bill Sienkiewicz cover? Okay. I love that. And now the, the, the new teen Titans episode or issue 13 is when they're looking for the doom patrol. That makes sense. Okay. Thank you. Cause all the Those acronyms, I was just, Oh, I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. slowly losing my, my mind. If I could smell, there'd probably be burning feathers. But you know, in new teen <laughs> Titans, I don't know if I'd go through episode issue 13. I have to go back and reread that. Yeah. I do have those omnibuses, though. Ooh, nice. Yes, I do. From Blake, besides my hero, are you a fan of any other new gen uh, anime? My favorite recent was Jujutsu Kaisen. Both the series and the movie is top notch. Uh, you know, I'm really behind on a lot of my stuff. I've talked to you about how I think you'd like Erased, but I don't know if that we'd call that particularly new. It depends on what your idea of new is, right? Because I think that was like a early audience. Yeah, no, I, I I have to say that I am not up on new. Yeah. Anime. I love Gurren Lagan. I really, I really like um, Violet Evergarden. Is that her, the one? I just started watching that because my brother introduced that. I mean, I would say, I, even though it's a Is remake, that? Space Battleship Yamato, yeah. when they started 2199, it was in 2012, but now we're up to 2205. By the way, my Japanese buyer has shipped all of my parts. I've waited through the pandemic. It's taken almost three years to get my four and a half foot model of the space battleship Andromeda. Ooh. I'm going to build that. I mean, I can't wait. I have waited. That is a chonky boy, as Justin would say. <laughs> four and a half feet of the space battleship Andromeda. Damn. Yeah. My Japanese buyer, thank you, Cat Hands. Cat Hands? Well, Cat Hands is his seller's name. Like Murder Mittens? Kind of. Okay. Cat Hands. I mean, he... uh He's a he's a powerful he Japanese stuff. buyer. He can snatch things up. I I mean it's amazing I, that I even have a Japanese buyer. Yeah. But uh and he only charges an 8% markup. Ooh, look uh -huh. at you. I know, Way right? To go. Good old cat hands. People are like, what? Good old cat hands. Uh, Khalil Frederick, shout out to the new number one issue of Gargoyles. Ooh, yeah, I do want to go get that. Yeah, I mean, that's so cool. Where is that live action series? Oh, I better do that one. for Disney Plus. Seriously. He's so good. So I love amazing. It. Just get listen to Rob and I, and just do the shows we want. Yeah, to just do. do the shows we want. You'll you're, you'll make Why money, and, and uh, yeah. But you know there'll be somebody that'll poo poo it at the studio level for sure. Rude. They don't know what it is. <laughs> From Fifi again, random. But have you watched Chainsaw Man the anime? No, I haven't. But it looks bananas. Okay, yes, it does look bananas, and I keep seeing people keep sending me stuff from it. I have to watch it. Yeah. I have to watch it. It looks really because really it's, great. it's Chainsaw Man. He's got a chainsaw for her head. Yes. I mean, I don't know how he eats. I guess that's part of it. I mean, probably. And then dub, the dub actor for him is uh, Ryan Colt Levy, who is just a really, really amazing actor. And I know a lot of people aren't into dubs, but I have only heard good things about his work and everything and everything he's in. He's really, really great. And it's just like the nicest guy on the internet too. So Would I'm that really be the easiest dubbing job ever? Because you'd have to just go... And it looks like he's doing a lot of solid work. Oh, okay. Well, mm. from Zashan, uh, Meteoric Rise of Manga Collecting since 2020 has been great to see as one who's been collecting since 2017. The Reddit went from 9K subs to 1.6 million. Well, that's fantastic. Woo, that's awesome. Love to see it. Well, a couple years ago, too, uh, there was uh, a little stat released uh, saying that manga was the fastest growing physical uh, literary genre. Wow. Which I think is really, really neat. And there is so much of it. Yeah. Which is great. From Sam Sugart, I want to make a film about the P uh about the PCP Titanic chowder incident. Rob must likely know what I'm referring to. Uh I don't know about the PCP Titanic. Oh, you're talking about when they were making Titanic. When oh, they were when making they all got drugged. Yeah, they all got drugged because yes. somebody was not happy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that would be I don't know if they'd let you do that. I think we got to wait a couple more years for a lot of those actors to, yeah. to age out of acting. Yeah, or, or the <laughs> fact that the studio that. would have to not want to admit that that happened. But so yeah. all those people were just running around on PCP? They, they all were having dinner and they all started they, freaking yeah, out. They all got drugged. Somebody drugged them. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like uh, The Abyss. The crew called it The Abuse when they were working on it. Yeah. Life's Abuse and Then You Die. Or what about The Iceberg? And then you die. Did The Iceberg get drugged? 
No. The iceberg did not get drugged. All right, we're good. The iceberg probably provided the PCP. Yeah. From a Sith Lord. Yo, Rob, you ever read a comic book called The Next Men? I found them at my local comic shop. I was very intrigued, so I bought 20 issues. Whoa. Yeah, now if, if this is the one I'm thinking of, John, Bur it's actually John Byrne's Next Men. Oh. I loved John Byrne's Next Men. I had every issue. I read all of it. Um, you know what? That's funny. I I think I have a an omnibus of that, but I would love to go back and revisit that stuff. That was that was sort of peak John Byrne. I mean, he went off kind of on his own. It was for it's Dark Horse, if memory serves. I think it's Dark Horse. Mm. But I really like Next Men. So it was good. Nice. From uh Sam Sugard again. Colin F recently said Penguin hopefully films in February. Gunn says they want a unified universe. Could Joker 2 be the last elsewhere? Elseworld project? I don't think that the Penguin show is going to be in a DC universe. It would be unto itself it, unless they decide to incorporate. Well, Matt Reeves, uh, are we going to see a Penguin show in the same universe as the Batman or not? Yeah. Well, he is in the same universe as the Batman. Well, are they going to join the larger DC, the new DC universe, or do they get do they carve it out unto your your? Will they you all to, be connected? If you only knew how large my world was. <laughs> all right. Well, the, you you heard it here from Matt Reeves. From Gabriel, Rob, can we get your dissertation on Star Trek? <laughs> yeah, Shh, we got four minutes, homie. No, you yeah, can. no, no, you can. <laughs> Not today, but you can. Not you today. Can, you can also go check out Rob's channel. Yeah, I yeah, love JJ Abrams. Why do you say this? Why do you do this to me? <laughs> no, no, no. But one day, John will not let me give you my dissertation on Star Trek on this channel. Yeah. You have to come subscribe to the Burnett work. There we go. You know something I learned today? What'd you learn? That Laura, I thought she had only seen all of Next Gen, but she's seen everything sent through like the year 2000. She's Ooh. seen all the original episodes, Next Generation, everything. Good. I didn't know that about her. Does That's she have good. hot takes about him? She's not. She actually doesn't. She prefers uh, Picard to Kirk. That's about as hot take as it gets. Okay. I understand that. That's fair. I'm same boat. Also from Gabriel, should they do a sequel of In Time? No, In Time was disappointing. That's got um, um, Justin. You know, you know, it's got Justin, Justin Timberlake, Timberlake and Amanda Seyfried, right? And and what's that? Amanda Seyfried. Yeah. Yes. And the problem that I have with that movie is it's got a really interesting idea. You can live. Your, the amount of life you have is on a life clock oh, yeah. in your wrist. Uh, and I think it's Andrew Nichol who did that movie, who made Gattaca, which I love. Love Gattaca. Um, I just didn't think In Time was great. No. Nah. I, I wanted it to be, but it wasn't as good as it should have been. I have not thought about that movie since it happened yeah, until this a, moment. It's funny. I watched it recently. I watched it in the last six months, and I was like hoping it would hold up, and it's just, it's not, mm. it's just not great. That's a shame. From... It's no Gattaca. From Gabriel again, should they do another remake of The Time Machine? I mean, Hot Tub Time Machine, obviously. I mean, but... look, it depends if they, how, the last one with Guy Pierce was very iffy. Yeah, it I mean, translate well. Yeah, it's a tough one to do. Yeah. I love time travel stories. I'll tell you what they should do, though. Stephen Baxter, the sci one of my favorite hard sci-fi writers, wrote a book called The Time Ships. That is a very cool sequel to H.G. Wells' The Time Machine. Oh, nice. I don't know if they could turn that into a movie, but if you want to read a great sequel to The Time Machine, and you don't even necessarily have to read The Time Machine first, The Time Ships, Stephen Baxter, jump on that. It's great. And then watch The Time Bandits. Yes, I love Time Bandits. Uh, from Zach Worthman, do we need them? Rob said in response to the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. returning last week. Yes. Wait, yes, they we returned? Sorry, go ahead. I, I just got shook. Go oh. ahead. <laughs> yes, yes, we do, Rob. Also, about that Ghost Rider hot toy. Indeed, it is the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Robbie Reyes solo. No yeah, cycle. I was corrected about that. So the hot toys made the Reyes uh, Ghost Rider and they made the Nicolas Cage Ghost Rider with the bike. Yeah. So and they're both great figures. I did not get either one. Now I want them both. Ooh. And is that it? That is all of it. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for popping in your super chats because you gave us great things to talk about and you supported this channel while you did it. So we really appreciate you. And as always, we really want to encourage you to go to your local comic book shop and get 
physical copies of comic books. That is the thing we really, really want you to go out and do because comics are awesome and we should keep this medium alive in print form. Chris, you know what else is awesome? <laughs> you and where can people find you online? Oh, man, what a segue. You can find me at actor Chris Carr on both Instagram and Twitter. You can also look at my voiceover studio, Speak Friend Studio. We're on Instagram. That's also our website domain. We are doing banana specials right now, y'all. If you want to coach with me or my husband, we are doing four classes for just $200 total. So it's a nice value. Value. We're doing $250 off our big demo packet. So it's a really good time to get all of your voiceover needs taken care of. So check us out. And I want to thank Jonathan Voico for producing this show. And of course, an able assist by Taylor Gonzalez, fact checking us all. I'm, of course, Robert Meyer Burnett. You can find me on Twitter at BurnettRM, find me on Instagram at RM Burnett, or find me on my own YouTube channel. Like and subscribe because my subscribers are like slowed to a crawl. I feel sad, like I'm useless. Oh, no. Go to The Burnett Work. And, you know, watch my content, please. <laughs> and on that note, we bring an end to issue 13 of The Weekly Hero. Mm -hmm. I don't know what we're going to talk about next week, but it's going to be page turning. Yeah, well, see you next time. See you later, Space Cowboys.